right guys today we're going to be talking about what trucks do alaskans edc or what are their what are their daily drivers if you do ever make it or venture up to alaska you will certainly notice especially in places like fairbanks where we're at now there are tons of trucks running all over the place and the reason why we're talking about trucks as a whole is simply because especially in the winter in adverse conditions when you need to get to work when you need to get out and about whether it's 50 below or freezing rain or even just you know a foot of snow overnight trucks are undeniably the kings of the road they rule the road and they give you the most capability capacity and everything to really tame the situation at hand so why are truck that so that's why trucks are so popular here and why so many people drive them and today we're we'll talking about some of my experiences with driving trucks and the trucks that i recommend the truck to iadc so before we get into it, my daily driver is a 2014 Toyota Tundra. This is a 1794 edition, and it is pretty well optioned out. Pretty cool, has some cool aftermarket features, but by and large, I think Tundras are pretty awesome for Alaska. And you definitely see a lot of these trucks running around. And the primary reasons why is they make a lot of low end torque. So they make about 410 foot pounds of torque, but they make it pretty much all low end. So what that ends up meaning is you have a truck that is really capable of hauling and carrying things um, and doing a lot of like intermediate to light duty towing. And so the, you get a lot of versatility. It's not quite at the level of like a half ton, something like an F-250 or a Ram 2500, but it is not far off, to be honest. It's pretty darn close and comparable in capabilities. Now, once again, it isn't quite there, but it is close. And so that's why the Tundra, part of the reason why the Tundra is a fan favorite for a lot of people. It does allow you a lot of great towing options, but on top of that too, the Tundras tend to be a little bit wider than most trucks. So what that means is in places like snow or in a lot of snow and a lot of uh, like icy rain, um, things like freezing rain and ice and snow are a lot more manageable in tundras because they have a wider body and they are heavier which at first doesn't necessarily sound like it would make a lot of sense but especially on roads um, it is nice to be able to have a vehicle that can kind of push down through the snow so you're not sitting on top of that snow spinning your wheels trying to get traction you're able to kind of sink down into the snow get down to firmer ground and have traction so once again off-road you want to try to float a little bit more on snow but at the same time on road you want to try to cut through that snow get down to things like pavement gravel whatever road surface is underneath and that's what a tundra does a really good job at doing it really kind of cuts down into the snow gets planted and gets traction um, even with not the best tires these guys still have an impressive amount of traction and their four-wheel drive is pretty darn good and I'm not going to say that it's necessarily all on Tundra or all on Toyota and they just make the best truck, but I will say that I have definitely uh, recovered a few vehicles uh, from, you know, off-road or from snowy and, you know, not so great conditions with my Tundra and where their trucks have failed to have traction. My truck grips up very well and uh, continues to pull. So I definitely like the Tundras. I am a little bit biased to them too because a lot of my life growing up, I learned how to drive trucks primarily on Tundras, F-150s and Tundras. So I'm very familiar with the platform and that might also be why I feel like it's the most capable is because I have a lot of experience and know what to do with it when it does lose traction, how to get it to get traction and you know how to best use its towing capabilities. So those are some of the primary reasons to why I think that the Tundra is really popular. But I will also say that, once again, if you drive around a place like Fairbanks, you will see a ton of these trucks driving around from all years. Even the Generation 1s are still driving around, like the 2000s, you know, like 2000 to 2006. Those Generation 1 Tundras are still running around. But you see a lot of Generation 2s. Obviously, the Generation 2s were like 2007 to 2021 um, you know they did go through revisional updates through that time but uh, those you see a lot on the road uh, and of course once again this is a 2014 so it is definitely a part of that group but overall it is a super capable truck and i think for being a 
full-size truck, you know, around the same kind of price range and territory as things like F-150s, uh, Silverado 1500s, uh, or Ram 1500s, Silverados, stuff like that. You know, these definitely have a lot of capacity and usually slightly more capacity or capability than your things like your 1500s, you know, your Ram 1500s, your uh, F-150s and stuff like that. And so ultimately, uh, these guys are definitely very popular up here for that reason. In addition to the reliability is something that's really felt here because we live in a state that is just very hard on vehicles as a whole. It is hard to keep vehicles running. So Toyota's reliability and like dead nuts reliability is really felt here, especially here because once again, you know, when you need a truck to start up at negative 50, a Tundra will do it. It's not very happy about it, um, but it will usually do it. Uh, usually it doesn't need to be plugged in, unfortunately, but, you know, these trucks will do it and they uh, are not happy about it, but they will run. So that's the most important thing is, you know, if you do need to go somewhere and it is adverse conditions, weather, you know, um, these trucks will run in those types of situations. So not to say the Fords won't or Rams won't, but definitely they may struggle. And especially your diesel engines are going to big time struggle at anything colder than like negative 30. Um, they're definitely going to have a hard time. So 5.7 uh, V8 in these things is old school. It's definitely not the most fuel efficient, but at the same time too, these uh, engines really do work quite well in adverse conditions, which once again in Alaska, kind of saying adverse conditions, they're almost like the normal conditions, the conditions we see all the time, but they are definitely adverse for most people and for most of the world like negative 50 is not a common temperature for most of the u.s so things like that you know are more regular here but uh, definitely adverse in other places so what are my experiences now as far as trucks go i have owned not a whole bunch of trucks but i have owned a number of vehicles um i used to have an f-150 that was uh, like my first vehicle my first truck was a 2002 f-150 and honestly i will say i did like that truck quite a bit it was a really good it was a user uh but definitely a really solid truck that thing had over like nearly a quarter million miles on it and uh it was definitely an awesome truck that 5.4 triton and it was you know a lot of people give the 5.4 a lot of hell but uh, it was a really good vehicle but at the same time too and, and it was good it, i took it through blizzards uh, going to anchorage and stuff like that so definitely a capable truck but uh, after that truck, I ended up getting a 2010 Tundra, and that was where I really started to enjoy the Tundras myself. Once again, uh, you know, I have had, uh, growing up, I did drive Tundras as well, so I wasn't necessarily like brand new to the the vehicle, but I definitely was able to put it in a lot of adverse conditions, snowstorms, blizzards, you know, wintry mixes that were just not fun, freezing rain, and that truck really handled itself very nicely, and uh, that is where I really learned to enjoy Tundras, their wide size and just their capability um, kind of handling winter conditions. And overall, I will say that I think any generation two Tundra is very well suited with the right tires and the right experience to ice, to snow, to like extreme amounts of snow. And uh, they can handle themselves pretty darn well. They can even get themselves unstuck pretty well in addition. Um, and a lot of that, like I said, is attributed to its weight and to its width or to its, you know, kind of size. Now, I did own a Tacoma after that, and the Tacoma was honestly kind of a letdown. You do see a lot of Tacomas driving around here, and I will say, when it comes to the Toyota Tacoma in Alaska in the winter, um, it is a good vehicle if you have it set up right. Usually what I try to do with it is end up weighting, especially the bed down. So you take sandbags and, you know, weight over the rear axle. And that helps give your Tacoma a little bit of extra weight, which it kind of needs, in my opinion, because what I experienced a lot when I was struggling on snow and ice with it to get it to, like, get traction was that it just wasn't heavy enough to really dig into the slick uh, terrain or, you know, the snow that kind of just it sat there on the snow instead of really digging into the snow and getting to traction underneath it you know like finding the road the gravel the the trail underneath it it would sit on top of that snow and kind of just spin its wheels spin its tires and so what i ended up having to do is make sure that it had really good winter tires on it which some people like they criticize me for having winter tires in the tacoma but uh anyways it's kind of hilarious because it's winter but um 
Anyways, so, you know, like having really good winter tires on it, having the bed weighted was how I made it very reliable and very um, realistic in winter. And once again, I pulled out a number of SUVs and uh, like lighter cars with the Tacoma. So I do, I do pull out vehicles with the Tundras, with the Tacomas, uh, or with my Tacoma, with the Tundras I've had. Um, you know, I definitely do recovery with both of them, but uh, the Tacoma was definitely a little bit more tricky because I was really just trying to get it itself um, in a good spot to like be a reliable off-road vehicle and on-road vehicle vehicle uh, for as far as like traction goes so definitely was a little bit more tricky and definitely not my preferred vehicle I think it definitely had some shortcomings uh, when it comes to its overall size like that definitely did not help it but they are still very popular here and very cool vehicles um, I certainly would take one if I had to like they're not an option that I would never use but they're definitely not a preferred option for me as far as uh, winter time and um, like adverse conditions in addition to I will say the uh, 3.5 I can't speak for the 4 liter v6 that the uh, gen 2 Tacomas had but the gen 3 uh, 3.5 liter v6 was not a fan of the cold at all I did have a few issues with it where if I left it out like at uh, like lower temperatures like in the zero like zero to like negative five uh, you have to be really careful about like uh, making sure that it started that it ran and idled properly or else it would not want to start again so do keep that in mind that three five is definitely a little bit more finicky in the cold as opposed to that five seven like this truck has and i think that ultimately that kind of comes down to the battery as well like with these larger engines you just need a heavy robust uh durable battery to really crank that engine over um, whereas in things like the tacoma they have a lighter battery that is not quite as it's cold cranking amps aren't quite as much as something like this so definitely keep that in mind too with tacomas that was like an issue that i experienced for sure Anyways, those have been kind of my experiences with like everyday, you know, uh, dr daily drivers for Alaska. I think it's really important to talk about because, you know, like Alaska, we have like crazy conditions, lots of snow, very, very cold temperatures, uh, freezing rain. We really experience everything that like the northern states of the U.S. suffer, but we also suffer, you know, a lot of low light and extreme colds. So like we get everything they get plus even colder temperatures, plus even less light. So that's another thing I should mention too, as far as lighting options, everything is totally upgradable, but I will say usually Tundras tend to have a little bit better uh, angle of attack when it comes to lights because they are higher up, they are um, just wider, so their throw for lights is better. And uh, I don't know, I was always impressed more with uh, my Tundras lights, like both of my Tundras as opposed to my Tacoma. They felt really anemic. And once again, you can always throw on aftermarket lights. It's pretty easy to do but uh, just another thing to keep in mind or bear in mind for Alaskan conditions. Ultimately, at the end of the day, I think both were Alaskan reliable. I really am pretty partial to my Toyota products because they do seem to be hold up the best in our severe conditions. And uh, things can get really crazy here really quickly, especially with things like freezing rain in the dead of winter that, you know, just adds ice on top of ice and it can make roads really chattery and uh, just really unpleasant in general. So it can definitely add a lot of like... Uh, issues into issues or unforeseen circumstances into your daily life anyways alaska is crazy like i said i do really like my toyota products they've served me very well they've never left me stranded or anything like that and uh that really is saying a lot because i know quite a few you know fords rams um and others you know that have had straight up like engine failures have you know left their owners on the side of the road um totally stranded so it is really nice to see that you know these tundras and tacomas i have had some you know mechanical issues with my taco and with my original tundra but uh 
you know, by and large, they won't leave you stranded unless you do something like grossly negligent and, you know, you don't take care of the truck at all. But with like, you know, regular maintenance and just general care, you know, these trucks won't leave you stranded, either one of them, to be honest. So anyways, uh, that's been my experience with the, these trucks in Alaska. And this is also hopefully kind of like breaking down why these trucks are so popular. Because if you do come up here, you will see a ton of Tundras. You'll see a ton of Tacomas. And these are really some of the reasons why Tacomas and Tundras are popular. Anyways, guys, hopefully you enjoyed the video. As always, God bless, and I'm out.